Hello, hope you guys are well and happy, happy Tuesday. Um, good morning to everyone. I just want to check in with you and see how you're doing. What's happening? How's everything? <laughs> how's everything? We're going to be talking about Zanpe for right now. Mr. Mutangwa. <laughs> All right, everybody come through. Let's have a chat. Okay, let's have a chat. Let me just sit properly. Uh, what's up everybody what's happening and happy tuesday happy tuesday to you how is everybody doing and how y'all are doing <laughs> okay all right unbelievable chris mchangwa takes on ed yes so good to see you man i hope you're well <laughs> what's next for everybody i just want you guys to share your thoughts today we're having a conversation we all need to share our thoughts let me just take a look at this one here Okay, all good. How, what's up? Hi, Mr. Munguni Isabel. Good to see you. Ambassador of Peace. He's a man of peace. He's good to see you, Simba. Uh, Silas, good to see you, man. <laughs> Joseph, you're here. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm so excited this morning. I'm always an excited child, so please just bear with me. Yeah, I'm a happy child. All right, so we are talking about Mr. Muchangwa. He's head on. He's taking, like, <laughs> Muchangwa doesn't give up easily, so you must know that he does not give up easily. And by the way, guys, it actually hear that uh, people are not fighting for Chamisa's face. You know, all Triple C, within Triple C, are fighting to have Chamisa on their, on their letterhead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, their logo actually, the little and the logo as well, but the logo actually, because the logo can actually work all over the place. Interesting enough, interesting, interesting. I'm gonna give you an icebreaker, okay? Icebreaker. Um, I wanna read this tweet. This tweet was sent out in 2017. 2017, <laughs> 2017 and the tweet was sent out by Trevor Ngwe. Okay. So Trevor Ngwe said, uh, since I started ad adult coloring, I'm having amazing dreams. Last night, I dreamt Honorable Kasukwira was having an affair with Grace Mugabe. I then woke up. As this was, um, you know, Trevor Ngwe in 2017. Remember in 2017, Trevor Ngwe was very close to uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa. He was literally his advisor. So he sent out this tweet, and this was the response from Sevia Kasukwire. He said, I did not know that you are such an idiot. You need a psychiatric help. Trevor, you need to grow up and behave yourself. This is literally Honorable Kasukwire responding to Trevor Ngwe. But why I read out this tweet is because I actually see that now they are hand on glove. You're always gonna see them having lunch, breakfast, dinner. What I'm trying to say to you is people can fight today and you see them holding hands tomorrow. So we must never hold grudges. There's no reason for us to hold grudges. Can, can I just confirm this? Can I confirm this? That we, we as a Zimbabwean people, we may be suffering from this syndrome. This syndrome here, <laughs> uh, Stockholm syndrome. I don't, you know, Stockholm syndrome. I'm gonna read the definition to make it easier for those that may still think, what does this really mean? A Stockholm syndrome is a coping mechanism to captivate or abuse, so to captivate, to a captivative or abusive situation. People develop position, uh, positive feelings towards their captors or abusers over time. This condition applies to situations including child abuse, coach athlete abuse, relationship abuse, and sex trafficking. So we have now become to fall in love with our abusers. People are very comfortable with our abusers. You know, do you know that you see them by receiving gifts from this very same people abusing them. And at the back of their minds is we are being loved. No, you're not being loved. You are just being captured. That's what it means. They've realized that if they give you gifts, you're going to keep falling in love with them. You think, no, you may not fall in love, but there's just that connection. People who have been in an abusive relationship can confirm. A man or a woman can abuse them anyhow. And then tomorrow, they may come back with a gift, maybe Chanel bag, Louis Vuitton bag. And they see that Chanel big, they're like, he loves me. There's just that tingling feeling that's, oh, maybe he loves me. I've never been in an abusive relationship to that, of that nature. <laughs> but I've, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very, I play my card smart. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I play smart. But I've seen people in abusive relationship behave the same. So we have tend to know suffering from a, a syndrome called Stockholm Syndrome. Us as Zimbabweans, we keep worshiping. People are taking cars. 
Members of parliament are taking 40,000 US dollars that they claim is a loan. The number one, they will never check if they can afford to pay back the loan. There was no, no, nothing. On our fathers, also on the other side of the judges, they were given 400,000. Some of the ministers, they were given, I think, 350,000, if I'm not mistaken, US dollars as a debt. And we are talking about people who are old. Who, and I don't know, this debt, how long they were given to pay back? Were their conditions? Nobody knows. And, um, and you're talking of giving a person who's almost 50 something thousand um, a debt of 350,000 US dollars. How are they going to pay back? But you know what? People took it with the belief that, oh no, you know, we know even if we don't pay. They knew they, they can't afford to pay back. They were much aware, but suffered from Stockholm Syndrome. Accepting gifts from the very some people who have put you in the situation that you are in. That's what's happening in the country. But I, I could not, I could not leave this, this, I could not. When I got hold of this message on TikTok from my brother Kandora, I was like, no man. This is exactly what's going on right now in the country. I want to play that um, message so that you guys can hear this video. Very powerful submission. And he was referring to Wikino Shiva giving people cars. You see people like Jar Press were given cars. Sandra and Devil was given cars. Some of these uh, celeb so-called celebrities were given cars because I don't think some of them are celebrities anymore. <laughs> They are washed up, and like Sandra and Devela, she's a washed up singer. You know, she's a washed up singer. I want you guys to take a listen to what Kandoro said. What a powerful submission. Um, trust me, you love it. Take a listen. I don't believe Wickno is the one giving these people money. Because you I don't think so. I, I, the, the, the money trail doesn't make sense. I believe Zanopi have realized we have come further than what I want to we're going to use him Good Thank you. for the simple reason that Zanupiev has a lot of people that he helped it in, in this election, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But they can't be seen to be giving people cars individually. Because if they then give DJ or Kwekwe GD6, everyone else is going to work up at Zanupiev headquarters. Like, but if Say Wickno does it, it looks like he's it's using his personal fans. Yes. He has his so, own. So, so, so it doesn't become a how about in the Gadao on the trail? And but it's because there's a lot of people that will come out of the woodworks and say, No, in the Gadao set up PA system. And then now it's just to his own discretion exactly. as to who he likes. I think there is a conceited effort to demoralize the people that way. I love the point. I think there is, there is a conceited effort to demoralize people that way. There is. A concede effort to demoralize people by giving them cars. Take a listen further. Concerted effort to create a new tier mm -hmm. of people to aspire to within the Zimbabwean class level. Because what happens when all the people, all they have to look up to is people whose wealth we cannot explain. Mm -hmm. It takes out Shungu that I can cut in a good decadent Zandi and a core of it. They end up in this little degree in the past. There's none of that in Zimbabwe anymore. People know to get a degree which I put over in the unemployment line. But people now have been thrown around these nuclear organizations. You know, one of the boss Ningi. Because these are people, boss Moku, the effect that. This being an ecosystem has created is mm. everyone ends up resigned. Mm. In their mind, you end up in everyone's mind, you end up believing like Zarupiva The only way to survive in this economy is to jump on the feeding trough. Have you seen the clamoring that has been happening? We're seeing it even in the CCC party no, itself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when you see now Van Varuda Tinger or Motor Nase Have you been no, seeing? I haven't. I haven't. Oh, no, it's 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 oh. people putting out as a joke like ah, I'm not going to oh, yeah. Joke not joke. But not Perry. You mean it? It it and these are high profile people. I'm talking now think about how many people in Mabuku who are saying given the chance I would do. So it becomes a thing, in your mind, if you be, think that's the only way you can be rewarded. I'm going to have to align who myself. Else, who else am I voting for? For people. 
join the team. Join, if you can't beat them, join them. So if this is happening in 2024, 2023 elections just got done, imagine how all the influential people are going to do lining up to doing things come for free. For free. Hmm. That's crazy. Ah, uh, it's an uphill battle. For free. I genuinely hope I'm wrong. Uh, again, these are none of this is said. In fact, it's just the ramblings of a guy who wants better for Zimbabwe. But yeah, hey. nah, we want better for Zimbabwe, man. That's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking. That the calls that people are being given, they don't even see that there is a transaction. No person will just wake up today and say, I'm just going to buy you cars, I'll buy you a car. I'll buy you. We know you can be bought a gift. By those, we have no expectations. But considering the state of the country is Zimbabwe, and you see people being given cars. Now, what he's saying is, wait and see how many people are going to start working for free for the regime. I can hook you, all right? It's a hook. And you think, oh, we are being loved. No, they don't love you. If they love you, they're going to fix the roads. If they love you, they were going to make sure there's food in the country. They were going to make sure that things function for everybody. That's love. But being given a hook, but in return abuse, that's not love. But it is sad to watch. Because when you look from the, I've told you from the 40,000, 350,000 for ministers, and 400,000 for judges. Check what happened afterwards in the country. The kind of chaos that's going on as we speak. Chaos after chaos after chaos after chaos. And remember, when you begin to be given stuff, you lose the, the, the love for work. And most people in Zimbabwe just believe in getting things that they never work for. They don't even understand the process. And like what you heard, they're trying to demonize hard work. Now the, that, 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 that um, you know, the, the culture of, I go to school, you know, I go to university, I get my, 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 my college degree, and I have to get a nice job, it's gone. People going to university to abuse themselves to sell their bodies. They're not going to university to get a degree. People are selling their bodies to get marks. That's how the country has turned to be, to get marks at university. Can we see, while we are watching, we can't even see how the culture is changing, how much our lives are being ruined by the same people that you are busy worshiping, king, binga, binga, binga. They have nothing to do. If you ask them a question, how did you get here? They can't explain. They cannot explain. All they are just doing is believe what we are saying. Just, just, just take. And we think we are just taking. You see, I've been saying to you, the people that are being abused us are not even educated. They don't even have ideas of how to make the country a better place. The only thing they know is to loot and abuse. That's all they know. They take and they abuse people. They come back, they give you cause. Now you have heard Wikinoshi by responding to, to um, Hopo Shingon. He said, this famous but poor idiot thinks every rich man stole his money. But maoner a gazi je kuchenge tambuzi akaita popular ne kuchenge sanyika vakazi vaka funga kuti ane marriage zino manje akurwara zino aone kwa dakasanga na na no I don't want to read this word quite a vile word recently apanakana oh very ugly words and this I'm successful and rich and really hardworking people don't speak like this. They don't even have no morals. They don't even know what words to say, not what not to say. They speak anyhow. And I'm sitting on the other side, watching. What are we saying as a people of Zimbabwe? Forget about politicians, us as a people. What are we saying why our culture is decaying and why we watch? We can see how they are demoralizing our society, how they are destroying our fiber, moral fiber. What are we saying about this? And I also ask a question to the church. What is the church saying about what's going on in the country? Because I saw a video circulating of a woman. I think you know her. She, she talks like a man. She always walks in the church like a man. She calls herself a preacher. She's getting into the church 
And the men, I'm talking about your husband, some other people's husbands are kneeling for her. And I'm sitting and I'm watching and I'm like, what kind of culture are we creating in the church? Men who are supposed to lead, to protect. When women are supposed to submit to the leadership of men, it's not vice versa. Men are kneeling for wicked men, women who pretend to be of God and they're not of God. They're not. While we watch, everything is going anti-clockwise. While we watch, it's heartbreaking. For those who didn't know, those accounts, those churches that you see, there are so many things planted around the church that confuses people to think a wicked person is a woman of God. They are not. Those are satanic mafias. If you can see how much they're interlocking with wicked politicians, it's all cults. That's how they manipulate, control people's minds. Why you think, oh no, they're just being, a no, 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 no. It's a satanic mafia. That's how they work. They control leadership because when they control leadership, they control everybody. And they change the culture. The culture of love, of dignity, of respect, of hard work is gone. People go to school, get a job, work hard. The process we used to save money. You know, our parents, as I saw my daddy from the time I was young, my dad would wake up at 4 a.m. going to work. I saw it. That's why I believe in hard work. I saw it. Today, kids don't have no story to tell. They just see money everywhere. They can't explain how did my daddy get the money. There's no explanation. Because he can sign something. We're sitting with the Mbuzi today where they're telling me that they've spent 45000 uh, $45 million on Mbuzi project. I was asking a question, was impose the project agent? Because we have actually things that need some work in the country. We look at things like our oh, hospitals. We look at the roads that are dysfunctional, but people prioritize Mbuzi in the interchange. We have lived with Mbuzi for decades and it was working. Was that a priority? Definitely not. It's a culture that we allowed, a culture of wickedness, manipulation, abuse, right in front of our eyes. And those that are working hard are being demonized. Those that are working hard are even being stopped. There are people that were trying yesterday, I guess you people were here to hack my account yesterday. And I can tell you, those people are connected from our people. These are our people. They were trying to hack my account. My YouTube account, because of the things that I talk about, they wanted to destroy. Because they believe in destruction all the time. They are enemies of progress. They don't want truth to be told. Where truth is, they want to destroy. It is very sad. But Dr. Musa, today, Dr. Musa is saying, it's time that the citizens take responsibility. We, as a people of Zimbabwe, we must stop outsourcing our struggle to politicians. We need to create a culture of truth in the country, a culture of hard work, a culture that believes that there are processes in life, there are principles of life. If we want to create a culture that respects a legacy, today, nobody knows where we are going. We must all tell the truth. Nobody knows where we are going. There is no rule book that can say, guys, this is where we are going. This is where we are coming from. No one knows. Things are just happening without no direction. They always force you to believe in a lie. I want you to take a listen to Dr. Musa. The benefits of our career is starting with the small things. So we need the political protagonists of the day to create a platform that is inclusive that allow people to come and discuss their problems with a view to find solutions, not to outsmart or outmaneuver each other. We should take the first step in your view. We should. We should. For, for me, for me, it's neither here nor there, right? Anyone can do that. Certainly, the ruling party, the government of the day, has more power to do that. The government in particular should find it within itself to create a platform that allows political parties or political players to come together, right, and work out what being Zimbabwean means, what's best for Zimbabweans. Uh, you mentioned the courts and uh, what failure of justice or judicial administration or good governance can do. Right? When people look 
lose faith in the systems and processes of government, when people lose faith in the efficacy of the constitution, it's true people resort to self-help. If elections don't work consistently, they don't instance, work in Zoom. People will start thinking of alternative ways of putting in place people that they think represent their interests. And those alternatives are not are not attractive. As I said elsewhere, those are ugly alternatives. And we must by all means prevent them. But this grip is life into the need for us to consistently seek to fix what's broken. But the solution is not to throw away everything and say our constitutionalism has failed, so let's just leave it to the dogs. Let's, let's throw our hands in the air. There's a lot of resignation among citizens at the moment. Unfortunately, that's Kuramira Mundakmakbu in Shona, as we say. We need to avoid that. Right? The solution is for us to come together and fix what we can fix. We don't have to fix everything at once. But we have to start somewhere. Otherwise, self-help is real. That's the birth of what we would call a failed state, a failed society. And none of us want to live in a failed society. We don't want to get there. Mm -hmm. um, so, some, some put um, equal weight on this need to talk between President Emerson Nagagwa and the Triple C leader Nelson Chamisa. Um, she also saying that the citizen is, the, is nowhere to be located. In, in this matrix, but yet when there's need for solutions, the citizen is quick to say, you know, to Misa and this and some other, on the other side, uh, President Emerson Nangitsa how, how do you balance that? How do you balance the ways the citizen, when the citizen itself does not want to take responsibility? That's the word that you use, responsibility. Um, I mean, we speak a lot about leadership, but I think we don't speak enough about followership, right? Who is a leader leading? What if a leader is leading reluctant people? What if a leader is leading wrong people, right? There is something to be said about followership and responsible citizenship. After all is said and done, it's the people, it's we the people who actually wield the power and the authority, right? But if we are not responsible enough, we allow wrong elements to take and abuse and misuse that authority that we as citizens have, including to the exclusion of us citizens, which is actually what is happening, right? So what we need is citizens who are responsible. What we can do is to outsource our struggle to political leaders. Which is why I spoke how, earlier. How, how, do you, how do you achieve that, Musa? When, for instance, you as a citizen stepped up and litigated, ended up being labeled an uh, enemy of the state. Job uh, Sikala, when he spoke out, Jacob Ngarufu, when he spoke out against corruption, he, he was arrested for insulting violence. Uh, and we have had a countless number of political leaders who have been arrested. And the whole point you journalists are reporting on, on things that actually been happened, is also arrested spent time in prison and eventually acquitted. Yeah. How, how do you take responsibility in a, in a land that is full of landmines? There is a cost. Like Nelson Mandela was labeled a terrorist, right? Uh, at some point, when he died, he was labeled the most loved and most admired man on earth. There is a cost to it. Uh, People are viewed as villains, depending on who's viewing you as a villain, who is in authority and power at that time. Right? When things change, those people that are viewed as villains may become the heroes. It happens in this, it happened in this very country. Right? Prior to independence. Uh, Yane? You and me, we need to rise up and do what's right for ourselves. This is no longer about any politician. We have to do what's right for the nation. We have to create a different culture, a culture that promotes hard work, education, because our education is gone. It is completely gone. You have heard there are kids who are not going to school. Half a million of kids can't go to school. <laughs> do you understand me? 
half a million of children can't go to school, but you saw my Mercedes Benz, I should dish out. That man could have catered for kids. When we were growing up, we used to get books at school. We never buy books. But this era, no people buy, they pay for the books. But people are being given expensive cars, luxury cars, and to drive. And you think it's just being given for the sake of... No. It's a hook. So that everyone begin to bootleg them, worshipping them for nothing. I love what Kandoro say. You will see how many, how many, how many, how many of these guys, these celebrities will work for free for this regime. This, this, I mean, from now going forward, you'll see. The one thing that maybe one day I'll be given something. Look at a person like that other guy who's like, he's crazy. I forgot his name. You know, he's wearing shorts every time with some PF thing. He's not looking like a mental illness man. He was used to be fine. He's gone. He didn't get nothing. <laughs> that very same guy I'm talking about. But he was used. You saw him talking all manner of things. When are we going to learn? When are we going to learn as a Zimbabwe people? When? Trevor Nguyen said Zimbabwe must use education for nation building. It is a scandal that at a time when other nations are figuring out generative artificial intelligence and synthetic biology, our leaders think drilling balls is an innovation. With 500,000 young people off school, going age out of school. Can you hear that? We are in a disadvantage and soon there'll be a burden that not an asset to the nation. We will only be left with the burdens, debts. That's what we have right now, security. Bed, not only that, I can only imagine if Zimbabwe is to turn, you know, when Zimbabwe turns, the kind of work that we're going to be facing with. Look at young people who are swamped with drug addiction. That's going to be work to the nation. Building rehabilitation centers to rehabilitate them. Otherwise, they'll be a terror in our society. Because their minds have been ejected by the devil from hell. Look at the kind of uh, criminals that we have today. Zimbabwe was never known of being those kind of armed robbers that we have today. But it has turned from up. Uh, it's all... Abuse everywhere. Criminals everywhere. I hate that in Ulawa, there's areas that you can't even walk. You can't walk. People are going to hurt you. Our society in Zimbabwe has always been a peaceful, loving people. You would walk anytime and be happy. But today, thieves everywhere because people are trying to earn a living. We need to turn and change the culture. Um, a lady said, I'm more surprised with those that blame Nusun no Chamisa because I'm PF unlawfully record members of parliament. Are we so much afraid of facing the enemy that the victim becomes the problem? I told you we are suffering from school. It is a syndrome. We rather blame the good people than the bad. We can see where the problem is, but we were going to spend our time focusing on the good people than actually dealing with the real evil people who are causing us this mess and misery. And Kingston says Zimbabweans are not yet ready to attack the enemy. And then Eli said it's more comfortable to attack the victim. Yes, it's more comfortable. We really can't face to face and look at this. Instead of calling a person Binga, you would call him, no, don't mess up with us. It's all these celebrities, they were not supposed to take the cars. Let me tell you, if they were principled, they were going to say, you know what, sir? I would respect if you take the money that you buy the car and please go in and fix that hospital. Because they have cars. Don't forget, I'm, I'm sorry to say this, John prays I have got cars. He doesn't have a car. He has cars. What was he supposed to do? No, you know what? We can, I appreciate you for actually giving me the car. But can you please take the money for this car and go fix the hospital? That's a principled musician. But no. No. He took the car. Show me a state where they're buying celebrities in cars. Just because they want to, they want to hook people into abusing them. Show me. If Zimbabwe was functioning today, all those musicians could buy any car they want, any car they want. But they rather sacrifice an entire group of musicians because of two or three people have been given cars. It's very sad. It is very sad and heartbreaking. Monster and Linda had a meeting today. I just hope they were not talking about Chamisa. I'm going to follow up on that story. I just hope they're not talking about Chamisa because that's, that's what they talk about. Zanpiaf, they said they will never abuse state power. That's what they said. That's daily news. We will never abuse state power. That's Marapira. But I said to myself, no problem, Mr. Marapira. We are watching and we are following. 
And you said you will never set power. We're going to pull that. You said you will never abuse state power. I just hope the two-thirds majority is not going to be used, like you said, to abuse, to manipulate. I hope. I hope. It's not going to be used against us. Now, we are getting into Miss Samuchangwa's dilemma. I wanted to kind of... Miss Samuchangwa's dilemma... <laughs> As Miss Samuchangwa... Do you remember the Kutunga Goro Gamba? You remember? Okay. I want to remind you immediately after the coup, what truly happened. I want to remind you. <laughs> I need to remind you. I need to remind you because you remember Mr. Mchangwa prior is the one who was saying, no, you guys, you're saying there's always my sanctions. There are no investments. You know, what happened to our life policies? You know, the same person. But immediately after, after the, the whole thing, the whole coup, it was a different story. Take a listen. <laughs> That was Chris Mchangwa for you. Now, people are saying if he had power and authority over the, the army, he was going to tap off the president, Emerson Mnangagwa. But unfortunately, he doesn't, have, <laughs> he doesn't have the power. But he was dancing with Tonga Kwarogama. We all like dance. I did. Mm. Look where I am today. The slap in the first betrayal I was betrayed. Because I was also there dancing and, you know, believing in the army. I did believe in them. I remember that. <laughs> We had a part with my family. Jesus, look where we are today. So Jairo said, Christopher Muchangwa is very ambitious. If he had the support of the military men, he would have toppled Munangagwa by now. He believes Munangagwa and Chiwenga don't have what it takes to be occupying higher positions in society. He's right. He knows their weaknesses intellectually. And let me just say this. Honestly, I was listening to the president talking about his, uh, you know, his uh, resume when it comes to education and what really happened in his past life and how he educated himself. Self-education, he said, in prison. I was listening to him. Are we all, are, are we doubting today where we are as a Zimbabwean people? That the people that are leading today, you can see. Are we surprised? Why education no longer matter in the country? Does it matter to you? Do you even need to be educated in Zimbabwe for you to do something? Definitely not. You can just do whatever you want. And if you can just get in pinga or if you can, you can just align yourself with the wrong, you can do wrong and then you also fit in and you get something. That's what most people are doing. Today, most people are simply aligning themselves with the wrong in order for them to fit in. I will never do it. I don't believe in bootlicking. I'm not going to bootlick nobody. Not in my lifetime. I only bootlick God because I know he can take away my life. I am not going to bootlick anybody. I don't believe in that. Someone was asking questions. How come Zimbabweans, all of them, the moment they leave, even musicians, do you know there are so many musicians that you see that have left to Zimbabwe that are doing extremely well? Yes. People are asking questions. How come? Yeah, because the environment is not conducive to success. It's not conducive. It's not for successful people. It is for cutting corners. You want to be a thug? Yes. That environment will accommodate you that. But it does not appreciate those who go to school. You know, there's no inspiration. I'm telling you, I was shocked. I was listening to Plaxedia. Do you remember Plaxedia? Um, uh, that is Plaxedia. Hey, that girl. Plaxedia, sorry, that was Plaxedia. You remember the one that used to sing with those two guys when they were sitting, the two guys that were twins? Where are the twins? Those beautiful twins that we used to be musicians, is him. Where are they today? They used to sing so well. Today, they're gone. And they were literally our musicians. But where are they? I saw her yesterday. She said, I'm so struggling. I, she was talking that she's struggling. When I said is we knew them being top class musicians. But no, the few would rather sell their heart. They sell their soul just for little things. They'll sell their soul. 
so they can sabotage everyone. I just can't even believe could you, you could take a Mercedes Benz considering that their kids were not going to school. And you know it in your society. Because if it was me, I was going to say thank you very much for the Mercedes Benz. I appreciate you. I would really ask if you can take this money for the Mercedes Benz and go in and pay school fees for all those. You can pay even for 50 kids for the entire, you know, school. I mean, maybe high school. Please, can you pay for them? But no, the society has changed. It's all about collecting material things I can fit in. It is really sad. Very sad. Now, when you look at what happened, remember the very same day that uh, the president of Namibia passed away, ZPF did send a statement, and also the president, Emerson Nangagwa, did send condolences. But Mr. Mchangwa wrote a letter. In, yes, this, he wrote a letter and signed himself that letter. And you heard when, when, when um, no, what I'm saying was trying to give you the resume of, of the kind of person he is, that he is a ruthless person. He has been like that for decades. The man is disrespectful and never disrespect anybody. Only the president, Emerson Mnangawa, would like literally like confront him. But with Mugabe, he didn't care less. He was disrespectful. Now, Sophia Kasukere said the part sends condolences on behalf of the generality of the membership, right? Atikure could well write another personal letter. So now, um, you know, Miss Samchangwa wrote a personal letter. Another personal letter on behalf of the party. He wrote a personal letter writing about himself and then put it on the letterhead of the party and then he signed it on behalf of the party and sent it. <laughs> the party wrote a letter sending condolences on behalf of the party. The president, Emerson Mnangagwa, sent on behalf of the nation of Zimbabwe, right? But he now sends another letter. Okay. This is the kind of personalization that has destroyed and affected the party. Many cardias have heard um, serious engagements with the late president, but will not have the opportunity that he has as info SARS. This is why Zanpef is losing his character and respect among the people. I, I, I did this. We're not interested in your cookery, in your cooked story. So this is <laughs> uh, Kasukure telling um, Muchangwa, we are not interested. You have ruined the party. Remember, last year, you, you, Kasukure made it clear that he was coming after, you know, President Emerson Mnangagwa. He was going to be head on the president. Because what he wanted was to take away ZANPF, maybe this faction of the ZANPF. And um, Tamara was like, we're not interested in your factions. We want a country that functions. We want this whole culture to die like yesterday so he's telling Muchangwa that is Kasukwe that no you destroyed the country because you've always been personalized the struggle this struggle belongs to every Zimbabwean but you have taken like it's your own after all the letters that were sent you decided to write your own letter that's Muchangwa decided to write his own letter now listen to the letter now sentiment by ZANPF is not it's, it's on behalf of ZANPF that's Muchangwa for you on the passing of the former president of Namibia, H.E. Comrade Hedge, uh, Hod Rif Genko, the People's Revolutionary Party, now it's him, ZPF has learned with shock and sadness that ultimately demise of His Excellency Comrade Hedge, Godfred Genko, the president of the People's Republic of Namibia. President Genkop was a statesman par excellency and loyal to the pan African idea, I know, ideals that uh, resonate with us as a party. He truly lived and saved the people of Africa and saved them all of his life. Now listen, program number two. At the behest of the party and the government, I, that's Mutawa. <laughs> personally worked with him during the 1989 transition to Namibian independence. I was his shadow director of elections side by side with acting president Muba. I was a diplomat with the then frontline states against apartheid South Africa. I was seconded to win from the United Nations headquarters in New York. Now, it has moved from the party to I. That's much I. I. <laughs> I. You know, see what I'm saying? I. Not even the president of the country, President Emerson Mnangagwa, even said I. But he said I. I and I. Comrade H. Gimkop was appointed director of elections of Swapo. He went on to distinguish himself as an Alit Kadai, a committed national unifier, a skilled diplomat, an unflinching militant at a challenging time. 
He had to fend off a desperate and last hour gasp of aggressive military belligerence by the occupying army of apartheid South Africa. Indeed, he braved through to deliver a re resounding electoral victory for SWAPO, the revolutionary national liberation movement, and with it, the independence and freedom for Namibia. We salute his patriotic sacrifice, his astute statesmanship in Sadak affairs, and his principled post posture in a global diplomacy. The President of the Republic of Zimbabwe, Comrade Dr. Emerson Dimon Nangagwa, has lost a long-term revolutionary colleague from their youthful days of exiled a political milit militants in Zambia. Their best homage is for Zimbabwe and their fellow Sadak youth to emulate his exemplary revolution and life as they strive for shared re regional prosperity. Then he said, Comrade Lee, much signed, much younger, Secretary for Information and Publicity. So he's not a secretary for information and publicity. He's no longer the minister. He was, you know, you know, booted out as a minister. My, my question is, out of all the people in ZANPF, he seems to have had this, you know, this passionate, you know, closeness to President Gamecorp the late, more than anyone else. And then later on, after he spoke about himself, he's now said the president. So he's more important than the president, Emerson Munangago. Very interesting. Interesting. Don't forget, he's an ambitious man, according to Jairus, and he's, he's, if he had the support of the military, he would have toppled President Emerson Mnangagwa because he believes that President Mnangagwa and Pshiwenga don't have what it takes to occupy the highest positions in society. He's, the, he's right. He knows their weaknesses intellectually. That's what Jairus is saying. And people are asking us, but the second paragraph, was that necessary? Definitely not. It wasn't necessary because it was a statement being sent by the country, not by him. I want to ask you a question. Do you think this is the question that I'm asking you now? I, there's one thing that I do not like. Okay, I, as much as I respect what pushing on, I don't like one thing. I believe that if the time we are spending on, critic, you know, on criticism, imagine if we can invest that time on just affirming each other. On encouraging one another because we seem to be spending most of our time on criticism when i look at the sadak part they're sending out now asking question do you think that sadak would help you why they're saying so because they said well sadak is engaging with zanpf regime you know i think fellow compatriots the executive sector of the southern african development community sadak met with mnangagwa's envoy simbarashi mumbenke gui to talk about Wait for it, the Liberation Museum being built in Harare. Do you still believe the lies that Sadak is coming to deal with the symbolic electoral issues? Yes, I believe. Yao, do you still believe that Sadak can assist us? I believe 150%. I've said the problem in Zimbabwe is everything has to be political. And they lack, some people lack emotional intelligence. So you tell me that Sadak must stop working on the museum just because it was a symbolic election. What does the shambolic election have to do with the museum? If a museum is a historic museum that can also still be historic even to the next generation, Sadak must stop. They must not meet people from ZANPF because of the shambolic election. I feel like sometimes we send information that is actually you know, incorrect. We are trying to take people out of purpose, which is, un which is unfair. It's definitely unfair. So now, just because I don't like you, you I've seen people, even families, that if they don't, if they don't get along with someone else, they want you not to talk to the person. Life doesn't work like that. The, sh the shame election happened, yes, 150%. But that, 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 does that mean that people must not stop working with Zimbabwe because there was a shame of an election? Life has to go on, but the shame of an election will be resolved. It's, those things cannot merge. So I don't think, like I said, as much as I respect to Hopo Chingono, I think sometimes I know Rasika. In my opinion, don't mix the two. Sadak is Sadak. Talking about the Troika, who's going to deal with the sham of an election? They will do the sham of an election. If they're looking at building a museum in, in Arara, why not? What's wrong with that? We can't all of a sudden wake up and say we need to forget about our past. No. We don't have to forget about the past. Our museum matters. Our past history matters notwithstanding those who are ejected the struggle and they're abusing us. They're abusing it. 
We don't have to forget about that. Let's not confuse the two. The shame of an election and what needs to be done between the Sadak region, between countries, it has to carry on. I still don't think that as much as we want change in the country, sometimes we speak negative again. It doesn't make sense. I still believe that the elders, I still believe that Sadak will assist where they can to bring sanity. Let's keep our hopes up. Let's keep our focus. I can tell you, let's keep our focus. Let's not listen to what other people are saying. They're just there to destroy. In my opinion. <clears throat> All right, so Dr. Water Muzambi, I didn't want to talk about job scala, but because job scala issues, every day there's another drama. Every day there's another drama. So we'll talk about it. Now, Dr. Water Muzambi decided to write an entire piece. You know why I did? Because there's been a lot of, um, you know, um, interesting um, you know, videos that are circulating where Job Scala is either in the bush or is either in with prophets in the church where he's kind of seeking sanity. But like for me, I think there is a lack of misunderstanding between the church role or the spirituality role and what's going on in the country. There's a misunderstanding between, you know, people are giving so much, uh, you, know, uh, you know, like trust or they are a highly esteemed prophets who are most of them are simply fake. They don't even know what they are talking about, most of them. They are simply love the attention that they are getting, for, especially from politicians. Because you know what happens when a politician comes to the church? People think, oh, a politician come to the church. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I've, been, you know, I've been a church girl all my life. You know, those guys that are holding the pastor's Bible, women love them a lot. They think they are spiritual. Oh, those guys that are playing instruments in the church. You know, most girls like them because they think they are spiritual. <laughs> of them are the worst i'll tell you why they're just literally playing people psychologically because every time you see a person in front of the church you're like i think that guy is very spiritual now nah, ask me about it i wanted to date someone ah! <laughs> i can't tell you the story <laughs> they are the worst i can tell you facts they are the worst so dr water Mzembe is trying to calm down Calm most people down as far as the issue of job scala is concerned. So you're saying the majority of us, our people need psychological support, services to varying degrees, not just job scala, as some of you say. Yes, he needs it. So do many, a significant cross section of our people, and I agree 150,000%. Most of Zimbabwe need psychological help. What's going on in the country today can change in an instant if we get healed mentally. Considering what the people of Zimbabwe have gone through at the mercy of any economy and un unforgiving politics, where pensioners woke up one day with zero pensions in 2008, insurance policies with um, zero value, medical aid, funeral policies with zero value, which we continue to subsidize monthly to this day. Is this not enough to turn an entire country into one big mental asylum? The country needs psychological support, services at the shop floor, in offices, industry, and at home. Our economy continues to be collateral damage to our psychological state. And I'm telling you, I'm one of the person who can tell you my past, my, my experience. My daddy, when he decided that he didn't want to work, my daddy had worked for years, literally 25 years. Um, he worked for, um, it was, um, what was it? Zimbabwe to Tobacco. My daddy was at a, a good post there. He worked for 25 years, my daddy. Do you want me? Do you want to see my daddy? Let me show you. you want to see me to show you my daddy? Hold on. Let me show you my daddy. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Let me show you my daddy. Oh my God. Okay. So this is my daddy. Hold on. This is my daddy. Okay. Can you see my daddy? Okay. So I also have my mom's portrait as well. So my mom's portrait is there. I'll show you my mom as well one day. But it's a, it's a very huge portrait, okay? So, my dad worked for 25 years at the Zimbabwe Lift Box. So I'm wearing a short for 25 years, okay? And uh, he decided that he didn't want to work because he wasn't feeling quite well. He said, no, I want all my monies. He was given a lot of money, okay? And then, not only was he given a lot of money, then he trusted this little girl of his, me, because he was not well, all right? He puts all that money in my name. What did we do? We went to Trust Bank and we invested all the money at Trust Bank. Tell me what happened to us. 
We woke up, all the money was gone. We moved from hero to zero. So I'm talking of what I experienced. So this is where we are now in this country. <laughs> Today, my siblings talk about that money all the time. They're like, the money that you put in Rumi's name, what happened <laughs> to the money? You know what I mean? So I know I lived with that nonsense. Okay, that's my loving daddy. 25 years of work, wake up with nothing because of this crap that we are going through. And there's still loot and loot and loot. Even after all that we've gone through, there's still looting. Okay, so at Independency, many of our current leadership walked from Bush to office from detention to office, from exile to office, with serious mental psychological baggage. That themselves acknowledged to having when they were claiming compensation of psychological and physical damage during the change of wounds they led war veterans' compensation claims. The matter of public record to this day, 80% of those claims were based on psychological trauma. Uh, they may have received the money, but none of them received treatment. Can you hear that? psychological trauma is it is it any wonder uh, therefore that they are unable to respond civilly to challenge on their hold on power in any other way except invoking the liberation struggle the bulk of our leaders are still fighting the liberation struggle except that they have turned the guns and repression on their own people Chris Wamadzi Wamadzi Read and follow his shocking uh, Chatham House presentation in South Africa, which he received no censor from the party hierarchy. To this day, urging the, the, the current generation to take up arms if they want to get rid of ZANPF as they did against Ian Smith. Is this not madness? You heard it. You remember when Chris said to you, Dr. Zimbabwe, you need to do what we did to Ian Smith for you to actually do something. You remember that? So our state institutions are part to this psychological problem and I ask how they release Job Sikala so uncouthly. Offloading him on the streets at night without a warrant of liberation that would have assessed the kind of help he needed before he was sent home. Elections are meant to give people a way out. They have so far become a source of despair and delusionment. In the absence of the free and fair elections, anarchy takes over. Our own toxic engagements here are testimony, the insults, the abuse on other social media platforms amongst brethren are a pointer to the healing sore required between ourselves and clearly national leadership must lead genuinely in uniting the country and giving it a new unity of purpose. We need a unifying narrative that comes from the top and cuts through the political, cultural, tribal, religious, racial divide as a matter of um, agency to heal our land, and then he put E.D. Mnangagwa. That's Dr. Walter Muzembe. Psychological trauma. Um, um, it is deep. Honestly, me, I've been studying a lot when it comes to, to men, especially men. My understanding of men, men are built to be leaders. They were created to be leaders, to protect, you know, to take care of families and their children, to raise, to nature, and to mold. But can we ask each other today, are most of the men doing it? No. Do I blame them? No, I don't. You know why? Because these politics have ruined our culture, where many have always been superior. Today, things have changed. So much abuse among our people, even in marriages. Marriages are collapsing. Why? Because of our toxic politics. These people owing the country so much. They've cost us almost everything. We understood that parents, and I'm talking about my daddy, for 25 years was working for Zimbabwe Leaf Tobacco. And there are so many people who can attest to their family members, their parents worked for years. They were faithful to the cause. But where are we today? Most industries are dead. My question is, what stops us to sit around the table and having a conversation? Nothing will ever free us as a Zimbabwean people except to sit around the table. Nothing. We need to sit around the table to fix this country. We have to. <clears throat> We're also still sitting now today. We don't know 
with us this triple c party do they have a president yet uh the our brothers so you know today bt uh Washman, do they have presidents yet <laughs> maybe job scholars is going to be the president i don't know i'm just saying do they have because people are asking questions Shavan, when these endless within Triple C have failed to find to find or reach an agreement of who should take over the presidency, weeks after President Nelson Chamisa left, I fear that Munangagwa has delegated the duty to FAS to make sure the vacancy is filled. And uh, Hope Watchman is saying, Mr. Promise Mukwanas has been canvassing for support, assuring some in Triple C that he has the support of the CIO. And there's this battle that is going on between, um, you know, uh, Promise Mukwanazi and Hope Watching On, where Hope keeps on accusing Promise Mukwanazi that he's a CIO. First and foremost, let's assume that he is a CIO. Why can't you bring proof? Because in it, I'm sick and tired of a country that people just like to do gossip. Bring the evidence. If he's a CIO, say he's a CIO because of one, two, three, four things, then we know the way forward. But keep on complaining and talk about it without solution. To me, it's insane. I don't have time to listen to gossip. I like to deal with facts. I really, really love to deal with facts, not gossip. I don't have time. I don't have time, honestly. Hmm. Interesting. So Zivu, you know Zivu, Honorable Zivu, the ZPF, former ZPF, he was kicked out. So he really has been going on like he's trolling people back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Back and forth, he has been, and he still is. As far as the child from Dutch Kaku Zereva in Chuzeva and Yemikana, Masins Wow, Inga Chisinga Perishino Shura, yeah, take Taura Ivan Vansway, in the Antita Wurin do Pika and a Changre and a Mugabe, is Antita Wuri, Paris Rugi Tiga. We are waiting what is going on there. We are all waiting to see what's happening. Our, our ears are open. What is it that's going on? <laughs> He said, by the way, we, there's no need to debate about my position. Rimunwa ED. He's, he's, no, he's ED. He's, but, okay. When there is a genuine development, government workers shouldn't have to go to get length to take pictures everywhere. Completing projects, especially those initiated by Mugabe, should be the norm, not an exception. Don't mistake unfinished projects for success and development. Uh, guys, did you see the Mbuzi issue? The Mbuzi issue, did you see it? They spent 45 million uh, US dollars, according to them you know but the project isn't finished and i was asking question was that a priority definitely not <laughs> the roads were the priority but what what an interchange that we have lived with for decades and it was functioning anyway i don't care how busy it was but it was functioning it wasn't a priority we could have put the money somewhere else but we still invested money into that impose what would 45 million us dollars did to zimbabweans today how many hospitals could have fixed I don't care how small, but we could have done something with the money. And then look at the exchange. Those are luxuries. To me, an exchange is not important. It's not a priority. <laughs> it's really not a priority. We're supposed to invest money in the right place so that we can fix our country moving forward. Isn't it? All of us. So we'll see. We're waiting and see what's going to happen. A court that is, is refusing to... Re no, guys, it's not an issue of refusing or what. One thing we must all agree is that the way, and I'm not, I'm saying this respectfully because I'm a black person, the way wise people believe, behave, you know, and the way they look at situations are different from us. David Cotet is earning thirty dollars per month. Do you know that? Thirty U.S. dollars per month, which means for him being a mayor, guys, he's simply just saving. In my opinion, he also remember when they wanted to give him a new car, he said, "I don't want it. Please take that money and invest back." He said, I don't want it. I've got a car. That's why I said, it's, it's, it's a shame that people like Ja Preza, with all the love that I have for him as a brother, Vanessa Sandra and Develi. Sandra, you've been in music, in, in music for a long time. You have buy one or two things for yourself, but you still have the nerve to go in and take a Mercedes Benz than to take the money back to the society. But you saw a quote that said, I, I don't want it. Don't forget about Markham as well. He's the only person who refused to take the 40000 you know, alone. He said, no, I don't want it. Do you remember that? How do you now talk about our black brothers, folks, and the wise people? Like I said, 
Most people are not perfect, but honestly, we all can agree, number one, they are very good at stewarding staff. In leadership, they are good. I would mind if Kotat can wake up and say, I want to be the president of Zimbabwe. I said, go, for, go ahead and be. Because I'm so desperate for something that works. I'm desperate. If you can be the vice president to Nelson Chamisa, I'll say, praise the Lord. You know why? Because I'm desperate for something that works. For a country that values you know, the real principles, not cutting corners, not looting and steal, stealing. But you saw what our brothers did. They let us down. Someone said, white people are not going No, I don't buy that. As much as you say so, let me, let me explain to you guys. Why we all can agree to say there's something wrong with us. What about our people who are stealing today? What are we saying about it, EM? And by the way, EM, you owe me something on my birthday. It's coming soon. You promised me fireworks on the 25th of February. <laughs> I haven't forgotten it. I'm coming for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, guys, wise people, you can't compare. Some people will say, like, about Dara. No, it's because we don't believe, like our people don't believe in a process, hard work, building little by little by little by little. Check how, many, how much people are stealing in the country. Millions of dollars are going. 15 billion Marange diamonds disappeared in the twinkle of an eye. 15 US dollars, billion US dollars disappeared. And these were our brothers and our sisters. Was not, these were not wise people who took the money. Our brothers and our people. 15 billion Marange diamonds. No one can explain where the money is to that. How much money has been looted in the country? And no, there's no explanation. Our own brothers, those are not wise people. And I'm not saying wise people were perfect. No, these are not our people. We need to tell each other the truth and really stop corruption. Corruption, it must be stopped like yesterday. It must be stopped. Today, the president, Emerson Nanga, was chairing a cabinet meeting uh, at the state house. Can I ask you a question, guys? What, what does a cabinet meeting means in Zimbabwe? You know, like I'm, I'm talking about in the Zimbabwe, uh, you know, context. Because I only, every time any meeting that does only see ZANPF people, I've never seen any other person except only the ZANPF. Either it's, a, it's, it's a wedding, they're always drinking, eating. It's whatever is happening. It's always happening in their camp. What's happening in the country? I've never seen other people like literally attending and also eating and drinking. I'm, I'm confused, honestly. I, I, it's like, is it a um, Zanpef country or it's a Zimbabwean country? I think there is a problem here. Either it's a Zanpef country or it's a Zimbabwean country. I, I'm, I'm confused, honestly. I'm, con I'm confused. Oh, you also heard that uh, apparently Shavangu is taking Chamisa to court for the building in Mulawayo. <laughs> I'm going to do that issue a little bit later. But yeah, he's taking Chamisa to court that uh, it was that building that was painted blue. Um, I just say to myself, please, please, sir, Mr. Chamisa, give them. Don't even take them. Don't even go to court. Let them have it. If they want your shoes, let them have it. Your face, let them have it. You know what they will do? They eventually give it up. Don't talk to them. Just let them have it. You just got to carry on with your life. They will get tired of everything and they will eventually leave it. So, guys, I'm going to land right here. And I'll see you a little bit later. So, hope you have a great day. I can see people from the UK are more here. So, I want to tell you that I love you. The UK, you always have there. More, most of the people that watch here are actually from the UK. You'll be surprised. Zimbabwe as well, and South Africa as well. And I appreciate you. The German people, America, all of you, you're important to me. I appreciate you. So, you must have a great day. I'll see you later on. And um, bye for now.